welcome back to the Done Deal YouTube channel. I'm David O.C. and today we are joined on one of the most glorious days I have ever seen in Ireland. And we're with the all new Skoda Enya. Now in this review, we're gonna be talking about everything from its range, recharge time, where the name came from, and of course, some of our favorite features. But first of all, let's talk about the design. So this is based off the ID4. However, I think it looks a little bit more subtle. It doesn't necessarily scream, I am an electric vehicle. It's just like a bit of a Kodiak with some different styling. Around the side, now it depends what pack you get, but these are the upgraded 21 inch alloys. They'll cost about 1400 euros, but they are well worth it. And then again, the subtleness continues along the side. It looks really, really well. It looks very presentable, respectable, and that's really the Skoda thing. It's just nice and it is what it is. So the name Enyaq, where has that come from? Well, for a long time, Skoda's kind of catchphrase was Skoda, built for Ireland. And I used to always think, mm, not technically true, it's really actually built for mass market Europe. However, the Enyaq, this one is a true Irish car as it is named after the singer and songwriter Enya. Now, what does Enya stand for? What does Enya mean? Well, it means source of life, and yes, the Enyaq is fully electric, so that is kind of the thought process with that. And then the Q is added in, as that's what Skoda used for all their SUVs. So you got the Kodiak, the Kamik, the Karak. The Q is effectively their kind of staple for the SUV. Prices, battery size, and range, these are always the big questions that come with any EV. So the Enyaq has a multitude of options. So the starting price is about 37 and a half thousand euros. And for that, you're getting the Enyaq IV60. Now what that means is it's got a 58 kilowatt hour battery. Confusing, I know, but just remember the small one has a 58 kilowatt hour battery that has a range claimed of 412 kilometers an hour. Then the more advanced or more expensive version has a 77 kilowatt hour battery. That has a claimed range of about 534 kilometers. And that one, the Enyaq IV80, has a starting price of 44 or nearly 45,000 euros. the interior of the Enyaq. Well, it's like booking a hotel when you get in here. So you've got the option of the loft, you've got the lounge, you've got the suite, the eco suite. The decision is yours. Now I believe this is the lounge interior and whilst it's lovely on a day like today, I need to turn it on because my goodness, black leather attracts the sun, particularly with a panoramic sunroof. Nonetheless, the layout in here ergonomically it is absolutely fabulous. It really, it just is a Skoda, which I really like. One of, depending on how you interpret it, one of the things about an ID4 is it's very blatant that you're in an electric car, whereas in here, in the Enyaq, you could just be in a Kodiak. It's very normal. The steering wheel is absolutely lovely. It's got the same thing that you get in the Octavia here, where you can just rest your arm on long journeys. Then in terms of storage, well, you've got loads. You've got some in here, which is really nice. You can also get that as wireless charging. Drink holders that are small, but nope, Skoda have thought about it and there's a parting there so you can get your bigger drinks in. Door bins are nice and spacious on the side. More storage here, more storage under here, and again, more storage in here. Skoda are literally just throwing the storage at you, but that's great because if you've got a family and kids, chances are you've got a lot of different things and you need places to put them. Glove box, little bit small, but we'll let them away with that. Now the infotainment system. So technically speaking, this infotainment system that's gone into all the new Volkswagen Group cars, whether it's Seat, whether it's Volkswagen or Skoda, it's a little bit buggy. However, this is a little bit better. So it's got a 13 inch screen. So it's a big old screen, but it has some shortcuts down here. So I really like that. If you want to change mode, you're going to overtake. You can just put it in sport nice and quickly. You've also got some climate shortcuts, which is great because there's nothing worse than when you're on a back country road and you're trying to change the climate here and it just takes your eyes off the road. And other than that, it's very much basic in terms of here you've got a digital display. It's not actually as good as something that you'll get in even a Karak or an Octavia where they've got the big digital display. It's quite small, 
doesn't have that much information except for your range, the amount of battery you have, and of course your speed. And that is effectively the front kind of cockpit of the Enyaq. It's a lovely place to sit, and as I said, you get you don't get the impression that you're in an electric car, and I quite like that, but again, that is completely up to interpretation. Imagine I'm holding a baby seat. The door is open really wide, you can put it in nice and easy, and I love how easily accessible the isofix points are. So it is good news if you've got children, and what's more is you can get one, two, three. So if you've been enjoying lockdown, it's good news for you. Now, as you sit in here, it is so comfortable. Loads of headroom, and this even has the optional panoramic sunroof. Tons of knee room. You've got two different pouches here that you can kind of put your phone in or whatever. You've got handle here, coat hook, Back here, it is absolutely lovely. You've also got a center armrest, which opens up and has two drink holders. And that's effectively it. One other thing I never mentioned in the front is these door handles to get out of the car, both in the front and the rear. There's something extremely premium about them. Boot space. Well, I'm sorry, ID4 owners, but you're going to have to hang your head in shame because the Enyaq has an extra 42 liters, bringing it all the way to 585 liters. So it's a really, really big boot. However, for it to compare it to something like a Kodiak, it's still about 250 liters smaller. Now, liters mean absolutely nothing to the ordinary person. So let me say it like this. It's quite a large boot. There's virtually very little load lip. There's some storage in here, some tie down points. One really nice feature I like is this Velcro thing. So you basically can put it there and stop stuff from sliding around within the boot. It bends. It's a good little piece of kit. Another thing I really like is under here, there is a compartment to store your charge cables. I feel like a lot of brands just do an oversight in that and completely forget about it. Now, one thing this doesn't have is an electronically operating boot. However, I'm sure you can spec it. And another small drawback is to get these things where it pulls open and slides down the seat is actually, actually an extra. So in this one, you're gonna have to come around here, which is fine, but if you're holding your lockdown triplets, you're gonna struggle. Twenty seven degrees. That is the temperatures we're dealing with. But anyway, more importantly, the Enyaq. How does it drive? Well, obviously it's good news. So the biggest thing I notice is the turning circle is absolutely brilliant. And for such a big car, you don't expect that. However, because it's rear wheel drive, it's able to do that. And the wheels are almost in all the corners. Now, why that's so nice is when you're around town to avoid curbs, tight parking spots, that's really handy. And in fact, it is a large car, but with the mirrors, there's great visibility. It's not that hard to kind of drive around town. In terms of power, so the smaller battery, which is a 58 kilowatt battery, but it has, or is called the 60. We'll not worry about that. But the smaller battery, all you need to know is it has 180 horsepower, which is more than enough. However, the bigger battery, which is the 80, which has a 77 kilowatt hour battery, that one has 204 horsepower, and that's actually quite a lot. However, the car is quite heavy, so it won't exactly blow the socks off you, but it has more than enough power to overtake and to kind of nip in and around town. Another nice feature is the shortcuts here, as we said earlier, so you can kind of quickly change into sport mode. In terms of everyday living, it's actually not the power and the speed that impresses you. It's just the way that it drives very, very normally. It doesn't feel overly electric. Your Apple CarPlay comes up here on the screen and it's all very intuitive. The one thing I will say is the regenerative braking is pretty good. So let's say you're a normal person and you just like to drive your car with no regenerative braking. What you can do is you can just leave it and drive and off you go. When you take your foot off the accelerator, it won't slow down. But if you put it into B mode or use these paddles here behind the steering wheel, it will give you regenerative braking. And what that does is, as you take your foot off the accelerator, it effectively uses the electric motor to recoup power and slow you down. Now, the Enyaq is actually even more clever than that. So what they do is it has predictive regenerative braking. Now that might sound like complete waffle, but I can assure you, 
it actually has its place. So what that does is, let's say you're behind a car in front of you and it slows down, it will regenerative, using that in the wrong term, but it will basically regenerate power automatically. Same if it knows the traffic light up ahead is red, it will of course slow down, regenerate power, and that's what predictive regenerative braking is. So overall, aside from all these tech terms, you could just put anyone in here and they will be more than able to drive it, but you can also put a car geek in it and they'll be able to do all the things that they like. And then of course you can get driver plus packs that include lane assist and adaptive cruise and all these different things that you can spec in any car. But yeah, it's a lovely place to be and I've really enjoyed driving it. Now at this point in every car review, we discuss some of our favorite and our least favorite things. And to be truthfully honest, I can't really say all that much negative about the Enyaq. I really, really do like it. I mean, it's nice looking and it's named after an Irish singer. What more could I possibly ask for? However, one complaint that I might have is that when it comes to specking it, just like a lot of cars, the world is your oyster. You can actually spec this up to crazy, crazy money. And let me give you an easy example. So when it comes to charging it, if you're charging at home on a seven kilowatt hour charger, You'll leave it overnight and it'll be fine, it'll be no worries and generally speaking the range even on the 58 kilowatt hour battery is more than enough than you'll ever need. But then every now and then you'll go on your staycation down to County Kerry to go see Fungi or Fungi or whatever his name is and I think he's also gone now but nonetheless you'll go down there and you'll need to do a quick charge. However you've got to pay 560 odd euro to be able to do a fast charge. So on the smaller battery, that's a 100 kilowatt hour charge. On the bigger battery, it's a 120 kilowatt hour charge. That, paying for that for fast charge, it's not really ideal. When you've already handed over the guts of 45K for a car, you kind of like them to just throw that one in there. It's not all bad. In fact, there are a lot of very nice features. The first of which is that on the Enyaq, you get physical buttons on the steering wheel, unlike the touchpad that comes with the ID4. Number two, and this continues on the theme of Skoda being built for Ireland. Well, they've got your back. So on a sunny day like today, you can avoid being sunburnt. And on a rainy day, you can avoid being soaking wet. I think Rihanna would approve. Number three is that the Enyaq comes with this protective cover. So if you've got things that you need to hide in the boot and you're out and about, no one can actually look into the boot and see them. However, it's... Oh, I figured it out, look. Oh yeah, I don't think that is. Hey, damn it. Oh, what, yeah, I'm coming down. So there you have it. That is done deals review of the all new Skoda Enyaq IV. And I have to say, I was really looking forward to spending the day with it and it really it didn't disappoint. It's been so impressive. So a big thanks to Pilsen Skoda Ballymate for supplying us with the car. And of course, if you'd like to search for Skoda's for sale in Ireland from all of our trusted dealers nationwide, then make sure to hit the link on the top right hand corner of the screen. But to summarize the Enyaq, what did I make of it? Well, I think it kind of ticks a lot of boxes. I mean, it is really drop dead gorgeous, but on top of that, it covers a lot of the market. So whether you're looking to get kind of an entry level electric car, but then again, if you want to spec it to the nines and have all the bells and whistles, you can pay almost up to 50,000 euros, get the bigger battery, get the big wheels. These are the biggest wheels they've ever put on any Skoda. You can get the pan roof and you can really deck it out make it look good so thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed the video make sure to subscribe give a thumbs up and even leave us a comment and until the next one we'll see you soon